Okay, great. Perfect. So what I'm going to talk about uh, is this uh, tool that we developed in our lab. We are from the University of Padova, me and uh, some uh, co colleagues of mine from the Department of Land and Agroforestry System. It's called the TESAF Department. So we work a lot on uh, forestry and agriculture and uh, also the uh, Interdepartmental Research Center in Geomatics, Geo. What we work with uh, uh, spatial data, and in this case, uh, as you probably, if you were following the presentation by ESA just uh, five minutes before, we work a lot with uh, Sentinel data because it's freely available, of course, and it's very high quality and is, uh, is a good spatial, has a good spatial um, resolution, 10 meters, we all know, Sentinel-2. So, Okay, so what's the main idea? What is this InforSat uh, tool that we developed? Now, first of all, we all know that uh, satellite data comes as a stack of images in bands. So it's uh, notably not a small amount of data. So we're talking about, you know, usually one gigabyte per data set. And uh, you want to also work on uh, time series data. So that already brings you the idea, okay, if I have to work in time series data, I have to collect a lot of images, not just one. So usually what you do is you download all the data you need and you put in the GIS or SNAP or other software and you start uh, doing your, your procedures on the data. Why do we want to do that? Well, in our lab, but most people, a lot of people use uh, satellite data to analyze the Earth's surface, of course. But most importantly, when we speak about time series, we speak about surface modifications. So we're talking about changes in the Earth's surface, so urbanization, or if we monitor vegetation, we talk about vegetation stress, fires. So this fires is a bit, you see the logo. It was actually born because we are in, involved in a project uh, uh, that's related to analyzing uh, extreme fire events. So that's, you know, the main driver was that. Uh, but then also the, you know, the growth, growth of also, you know, green areas in the urban environment. And uh, I put that in an asterisk because I was thinking about all the surface modifications and all these negative connotations came, you know, urbanization, deforestation, you know, pollution. So I said, I have to find something that's a bit more positive. So, you know, in urban cities, uh, you know, we know the, how precious it is to have green areas, uh, parks, and because of uh, heat mitigation, heat island mitigations, etc. So that's also something that we can use satellite data for. So we, you know, I work in the city of Padova, and now there's a big project in the city of Padova that they want to plant a lot of trees. So, because they want, you know, a, a greener city. So with satellite imagery, we can monitor and see, okay, let's see how the city will change before and after the project, the trees that are planted. Now, uh, so open source tools, probably you know better than me that there is a lot, a lot, a lot of open source tools that uh, deal with, sat with imagery. We heard about our fail toolbox. We, we know, <laughs> I can just a GDAL library. We, we know there's a lot of open source tools out there. So since we have to work with imagery, which is not lightweight, uh, and it requires image stacks, our idea was uh, to put everything, start thinking remotely. Now, this is not a new idea, of course. So just not go to the typical uh, download your image and everybody do their own um, processing of the image in their own computer, but just put the images remotely and organize them in a way that uh, all users can already find their image available and do not have to download the same image over and over. Um, and of course, this is very important because, the, as I said, surface modifications are also proxies for, um, for climate change and other things. So if we see the dynamics in surface or surface modifications, we can also predict what will happen in the future, what could happen in the future, and also take action. So our idea says, okay, there's already some, a lot of uh, solutions that uh, contemplate the use of uh, remote image, remote servers. 
So there is a, there's Google Earth Engine. Maybe some of you are uh, are acquainted with that. But there's also other other tools that uh, access the data directly online. But uh, the criteria behind this is also that we wanted uh, to create an architecture because we also have PhD students and we have um, master students that start to work with satellite imagery. So they could also get acquainted with the procedure, with the workflow that is typical in uh, satellite image analysis. And uh, so we created with a project, we bought, let's say, this uh, this Linux, uh, this um, architecture, this hardware, basically. We got it, got it hosted by the university in the university um, calculation center where they have all the, you know, the high pers high high performing computers, and it's not particularly uh, fancy. It's a Linux operating system, headless, so it doesn't have uh, interface. And uh, behind it, we decided to use R as uh, the, um, how do you say, the, the daemon, the one, the thing that takes care of all the processing. Why that? Because R has a very nice uh, uh, library called Shiny that allows you to create web applications. So we have the server side, uh, a lot of tools that we will talk about that take care of the image analysis on the server. We have the images on the server, and the Shiny web application allows the user online just to access a web page and tell the server what to do with the images via web, via the web. So again, this is not anything new, but uh, uh, we wanted to, to use these tools and see also how much we can go, how far we can go with this. And uh, we used also Map Server because it has a lot of uh, uh, solutions that allow to interact with images, not so much for the processing of the images, but also for uh, providing uh, web mapping services. So we can actually use the net, the web GIS, the web app from Shiny, and see the products of processing the images. So the first step was to... Um, create a very, very easy architecture. So decide to save all the imagery in a single folder. So decide a root folder. The image is downloaded and unzipped. Your typical Sentinel-2 image is usually compressed. And uh, uh, again, this is done by an R script. So the R script just says, okay, let's see what images are available. Of course, not for the whole Earth, but just for a sp specific uh, area that we are interested in, but this is agnostic, so it can be actually replicated also in any area. You just have to decide which is your area of interest. And the script automatically downloads the data if it doesn't, it's below a certain threshold of cloud cover and uh, unzips the file. So you have the your information in a folder, each image, and uh, it's already structured. Uh, if you've ever worked with Sentinel-2, you know it has this very specific structure, the folder structure. So what happens is that the script also creates a lookup table. Very simply, each file that is downloaded has a date and has, a, um, as you can see, it has a tile. I think I should have a mouse pointer somewhere. No, well, you know, it has, as we will see also in the next slide, um, it has a, a, the, um, a tile, so its image is divided into specific areas. Uh, which are coded with a specific uh, index. So the script knows exactly with the image, where it's georeferenced, and the date, because it's inside the file name itself. So what we have, this is the interface, and uh, we, have, uh, um, we have a very simple interface where you can choose the tile you want to work on, and you can choose the date. And what actually happens the visualization part is that uh, uh, you can visualize you can visualize uh, the an index. Why did we choose that? Because indices are band combinations, and indices are quite easily created on the fly. So the index is not pre-calculated, but it's actually calculated on the fly. The user can actually provide his own uh, uh, calculation of the index by using very simple, uh, we could call it very simple syntax. Uh, 
and then it provides the, the output of the index. Now that's done quite fast, and uh, it's done quite fast because the image is subsampled in the sense that uh, uh, the index is not calculated for all the pixels of the bands, but it's calculated only depending on the zoom level and uh, on uh, which area is being visualized. So you can choose, uh, again, uh, as you can see, you can choose pre-loaded indices, or you can change, you can, you know, play around with your own formula. As I told you, this is also for students. So that's why we, we, we did this, not only for academic uh, for research, but also for students to learn how to do this. And, um, and for example, this is uh, an index that's calculated. What happens is when you zoom in, you will see that the index uh, is, uh, has a specific um, resolution, which is not the resolution of the image, but might be very much a rougher resolution because if you're looking at the image from a, a zoom level far away, then you will, he will actually resample the image and only calculate the index uh, uh, at a rougher scale. If you zoom in, you can recalculate the index, so you can actually go all the way up to the original resolution of the of the of your image. In this case, it's 10 meters. Uh, you can also decide to if I don't know if you see the difference. There are some different resampling types, like this is bilinear. And this is another resampling type, so you can also teach students what actually happens when you choose different resampling schemes. Uh, maybe if some of you are uh, familiar with these uh, resampling schemes, you might know they come from GDAL. So what happens, what's behind here is the GDAL warp uh, function uh, executable, which is called by R. So what happens behind the scene is very simple procedures, but the procedures are actually encoded into an interactive uh, web app. For better, for better understanding, uh, actually, of what your index tells you about your Earth surface, you can also use. Uh, you can also upload the colored image, so you can actually do band combinations, and have both the index and your mm, your image. Uh, interpreted as a color combination. And you can move the mouse around and actually see what is going on. Uh, here, the last thing I want to talk to you about is that um, all this was born to see, to do multi-temporal analysis. So what the user can do, he can say, okay, I want to see what happens in certain areas over time. So the user can, can draw an area and um, Basically, what happens is that the, the R calls all the functions that are necessary to sample those areas on all the images that are, have been downloaded. And as all, uh, mm, all stat aerial statistics do, it uh, pulls out the median, average, standard deviation, so you know what happens over time over that area. And this is also to show students the problem with atmospheric correction, if there's a cloud. So if you have a high standard deviation, deviation, very likely there is a cloud that's right on the area. Because yes, we download, we try to download uh, images with very low cloud cover, but you might always get your, uh, your typical Murphy's Law that you get the cloud right on your area. And if you want, you can of course, remove certain dates, or you can just decide to not process uh, uh, some dates because maybe they are too, uh, there is too cloudy, they are too cloudy for that area at that time. And uh, you can analyze the plots directly online, or you can download your, uh, you can download your data in a, in a worksheet in Excel in a uh, normal spreadsheet. So if you want to do your own analysis with your own tools, you have your data over time over that area. And this is all the information. As you can see here, the table gives you both the index value, the cloud cover probability, the snow cover probability, which is are all information you find in your Sentinel-2 uh, image, which has been processed uh, and uh, as to level two. Okay, just to get uh, some last points. Again, this 
for students can be a gentle introduction to several remote sensing concepts. Uh, so how remote sensing data, how it comes, how the images are downloaded, how the file is named, and what you actually find in your inside your package when you download the compressed uh, image. Uh, you, they can appreciate the importance of Earth observation. So when they see what happens after a fire, how your index changes after a fire, that actually I've seen a lot of feedback from students that are quite impressed. And also they are very interested to see how, for example, the NDVI index has certain seasonalities. So it's not always constant, but changes with seasons because the photosynthesis is not always constant, depends also on the temperature. And uh, they can do that with multi-temporal analysis. So that's the first primers to foster also curiosity to students. And the nice thing is that it's all online, so they don't actually have to do that. The first impact is a bit, uh, is, as I said, is a bit gentler. And um, they don't have to install software. And again, it's uh, agnostic in the sense you can develop it in any area. It just depends what image you download. If you download an image maybe in, uh, let's say, in Canada, uh, from Canada, the script automatically, you know, figures out from georeferencing that that image is in Canada, so you will get the tile over Canada and you can analyze the image. Um, plus, of course, the students learn about bank combination, calculating indices, etc. Okay, so now what's the future developments? Basically, uh, it's it's in GitHub. Um, it's not the package yet. I don't know if it will ever become actually a, a package because it's quite uh, it's basically a collection of software. So it's not it's not intended to be ever a package, but it's more of an idea. And but I, it can be implemented in your own uh, server if you want. It's uh, we are we are trying to create a manual so to see step by step how to how to uh, to, to uh, install it in your own server. It's quite straightforward, but it requires a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, tweaks in some of the files. Basically, it just requires to know where the root, the path to the root server is, and then you have to launch for the first time the script that crawls in all the subfolders and finds the images. Uh, the web portal is online uh, so far, it's, you know, there's no password because there's not, it's only students, but if we see too many people accessing, uh, we will maybe provide a password and ask for, for people to register just because, of course, uh, it might, uh, we don't want to clutter the server. The another nice thing I want to mention, I still have one minute, is that uh, uh, you can also do the analysis in par using parallelized uh, it's very simple because obviously a lot of all those aerial calculations can be parallelized because there are the same calculations over many images. So we can actually decide uh, if we want uh, to uh, use more than one, one uh, cluster. We can make a cluster of multi-thread and uh, or, or not, or maybe we just don't care. We just want not to do it and make parallel processing. Uh, I think I've done, that's it. There is a video, but it's five minutes and there's no time. So maybe I'll just run the video while you ask questions. Uh, so I'm open for questions.